We've been talking a lot about the dual nature of matter, and the topic of this video is what amazed me the most during my year 12. It puts everything we have learned in this unit together. Remember a few episodes ago, I told you that we weren't done with de Broglie just yet. His theory solved a huge question in physics at the time, which was about the Bohr model of the electron. You've probably seen electron energy levels drawn this way, and they actually correspond to the same energy levels as in this diagram over here. So this inner circle represents n equals 1, this is n equals 2, this is n equals 3, and so on. And the question that de Broglie answered is why can't we have electrons in these energy levels over here? Or in case of our diagram, that would be over here somewhere. Why can't electrons occupy these energy levels in between? Or in other words, why are there only discrete energy levels? And his thinking was this. We already know that matter, including electrons, sometimes behaves as a particle and sometimes behaves as a wave. So they show particle and wave behavior. And what if we take the wavelength of matter and wrap it around in a circle. So I think this idea is most evident with the n equals 2 energy level. So if we imagine the standing wave as a straight line, and I just gave you a hint as to what this could be, at one point it looks like this, and then after a quarter of the period the entire wave is flat, and then after some more time, after a half of the period, we're now at the opposite end, and then it goes back to flat again, and then we repeat. Now when we, when we wrap this around in a circle shape, these points here are going to move up and down. Well now that I've illustrated what happens when this phenomenon works, let's now go back and answer the same question that de Broglie answered. Why can't an electron occupy an orbit in between these discrete energy levels? So I've tried to fit two and a half peaks in this diagram, and as you can see, the electron has arrived at the same point in the orbit as a peak and as a trough. And what happens in that case, think back about a wave on a string. When a peak meets a trough, we get a zero line. So when this electron arriving at a peak meets itself, the start of its wave, which is a trough, it's going to cancel itself out. So we draw this conclusion then that the circumference of the electron's orbit must be an integer multiple of its de Broglie wavelength. And that is the most beautiful conclusion that I think we ever have to draw in Year 12 physics. So let's just look at what this means with reference to the pictures. This is the ground state n equals 1, and the circumference of orbit is the wavelength, exactly one wavelength. This is the first excited state n equals 2, and the circumference is twice the wavelength and so on for the rest of the excited states. So we have this general statement then that the circumference of an electron's orbit is equal to the excited energy level multiplied by its wavelength. And for your year 12 purposes, you really don't need to know any more detail than this. I mean, we could call the circumference 2 pi r if we wanted to, and r is a Bohr radius, but again, you only need to know a qualitative description. So thank you for watching this video. I really found it the most fascinating topic when I learned physics. Let me know what your most fascinating topic was. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email or leave us a comment below.